Hi, it's uh, Robin here again. I'm doing a uh, continuing video. Um, I've done uh, a couple of others um, throughout this uh, before. Um, and what I'm trying to do is repair a battery for a 9 bot one e Plus. Now, um, as you can see, um, the, uh, I'm in the process of taking this apart. Um, all the plastic has come off it. Um, what we're going to have to do today is take the uh, battery <coughs> management board off the batteries. Uh, I know there is five pairs of cells that are dead. There's 15 pairs of cells on the pack altogether. Five pairs of cells are dead. They're going to have to be removed and replaced. Now, <coughs> as I say, uh, working on these uh, battery packs is potentially quite dangerous. Even though I've got dead cells on this pack, that does not reduce the risk because um, the, the dead cells are effectively shorted out. And so we have got 10 active pairs of cells that are fully charged. And if I was to short them out, um, it, it would cause uh, some serious problems. Right, so a little bit of safety stuff here. There's some notes on uh, the dangers of these lithium batteries. Uh, you can pause it to watch this and uh, this is the battery pack um, it's those last uh, 10 cells before the link that are being replaced I thought I'd just include so, it. I've got a, a fairly substantial soldering iron here uh, God knows what it is 100 watts probably maybe more let me see on that one um, because these terminals are big so the, the having a good hot iron is going to make uh, this job easier I've also got a uh, solder sucker um, to suck the solder off the terminals. Now, since I'm effectively, you can't switch the batteries off, since I'm working on a live system here, yeah. the trick to not shorting anything out is only to touch one place at any one time. So as long as I'm making contact with just one terminal, not bridging anything, um, everything will be fine. So, so let's begin. want to uh, want to tease up these uh, these connections so we'll do this one first we can In sucking the solder off the board, I've made the, the uh, joint a bit dry, so the soldering iron doesn't necessarily take to the joint as well as it did before.
make it hang on. And I've got the same problem here now, but I think it's, yeah, same problem here. So, will we get the last one? Yes. And there we have it. There's the uh, battery management board off the batteries. So um, we're making progress. We'll put that to one side a moment. Voila! So we're we're doing well. So we'll get rid of that. So now, um, previously, uh, previously I identified uh, which cells in this pack were defective. So I drew drew a chart. Um, of the, the battery pack and uh, on it with green dots I have marked the defective cells. So what I've done is I've uh, marked the, all the defective cells in that pack. So that means that um, I can, the next job will be to cut these, uh, cut these cells out of this pack. So uh, okay, so that's good. We've got our uh... We've got our battery pack um, with the um, battery management system board taken off. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got to disconnect the cells which I've marked here as defective and on the back. We've got to cut those out of this battery pack. Now the cells are welded, spot welded in place. So we've got to We've got to cut through the, the nickel um, to disconnect the batteries. Now, I can't do it with the hacksaw blades. If we damage these cells, um, potentially we could uh, have a very exciting time. So what I'm going to use instead is this. It's a, effectively a Dremel, although it's a cheap version of it. But what I've done is I've put a cutting disc in the end, and it's the cutting disc that I'm going to go through. Now, we're going to have to go very very gently here um, because I do not want to cut into the battery. Um, at the top of the, the cell on the positive side um, there is a fish paper disc um, to try and prevent things shorting out um, and I don't really want to be cutting into that. So, uh, so here we go. So I'm going to turn it on. Now, there's no particular rush here so what I want to do now is I'll just push up with a screwdriver and see if I've cut it enough to dis disconnect it and look at that how about that so those cells are now disconnected so having disconnected uh, this little block of five which are all defective cells I need to remove them now this is the easy side because um, they are they are glued here, so we'll see if we can uh, persuade them to come off. We'll leave the fish paper behind if we can, because it's still connected to the rest of the batteries. There we are. So we've removed them. So those uh, those batteries are defective, all of them, all five, and then very nicely grouped together. That's uh, very convenient, and they will have to be replaced. So I'll take out three of the batteries, which I can do. We'll just uh, we'll remove the, the three, which I can get to.
Okay. So push that back where it's supposed to go. And there we have it. Another two tough cells. So what I've done there, you can see that, is I have successfully removed all the defective cells um, from this battery. So all the, all the cells that are remaining, um, I've tested them to be good. Aha, which is, uh, brings me on to another thing now. Um, I say good. <sighs> these, all these cells have had abuse of one sort or another. And I'm sorting out the terminals a little bit here because I've been bending them over. Right, so all these batteries on this uh, remaining uh, in this battery block now are showing four volts. Not only that, I haven't charged them um, at all in weeks and they seem to be retaining their charge which is a good thing so I would expect to leave them a month and not to see any any significant or even any um, voltage drop on these cells. But uh, before I put 50 pounds worth of new cells into this block I wanted to be a little bit more confident about these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wire them up as a effectively a 40 volt 38 volt battery and then we'll load it and we'll run them down um, 40 volts down 10 percent I know um, 36 down to 36 or something yeah we'll run them from 40 down to um, to 36 or maybe a bit lower uh, 35 and see that we got capacity in them and that the voltage is um, because there's no bend there's no battery management system on this now so what I'll be looking for as they discharge is seeing that the voltage across each of the cells is remaining equal or very similar to each other so I will discharge the money slowly but I'll discharge them um, down to see if we got if their capacity is in there and that they're charging the evenly and then we'll charge them again um, back up to their capacity again and that will just um, that will just uh, confirm to me that the capacity of these cells is still there and that we haven't got any weak cells in this pack so I want them to all discharge together I want the, I want the capacity to be there I want the, the cell voltages to remain equal or roughly equal closely equal as the thing discharges and I'll do that by putting a dummy load on this and discharging it um, and that way I'll get confidence in these batteries of being okay before I add 50 pounds worth of new batteries uh, to build the pack up again. So, uh, okay, so that's that for the moment and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>